I believe in love. We believe in love. That would be the greatest thing that people could say about us. Thank you so much, you all. Well, the journalist Chris Wagner, has anyone ever heard of him? No, I hadn't either. He wrote several months ago a, an important truth. He wrote that baseball is designed to break your heart. And he isn't even a Dodgers fan. <laughs> After yesterday's game in St. Louis, the Dodgers have won 72 games. But they've also lost 52 games, which oddly makes them number one in the National League. <laughs> How does that work? I don't know. Wagner has this interesting theory about why sports are such an important part of our lives, especially in America. He believes that since we are currently living in a world in which tribalism is pulling us apart, the completely imaginary tribalism of sports fans is a necessary bomb. Wagner insists this is not because it allows us to celebrate, although we occasionally do get to do that. Rather, it is because we get to lose a lot. And he asserts that nothing brings us together like communal suffering, which in turn can help prepare us for the worst that life has to dish out. No matter which sport or team you are rooting for, somebody always has to lose. Except in soccer, rugby, or I forget what that other one is. So Wagner says watching our teams lose, sometimes week after week, is helping us develop a life skill we didn't even know we needed which makes me officially now a Chris Wagner fan because his idea means that watching those Sunday afternoon football games every Sunday in the fall after church, which I so dearly love, well, those are actually teaching me a valuable lesson, a lesson I can in turn then share with all of you. It's good to know that Sunday afternoon football actually can be a continuing education class in pastoral theology. Wagner also reminds us we do not have to live very long to realize that in life we are going to lose. To live is to lose a loved one, a marriage, a job, a sense of identity. And he says, sports are absolutely vital because compared to all of that, sports are nothing. But they do give us one important thing. They give us a kind of laboratory of loss, a relatively safe arena in which to practice for the losses that actually really matter. In so many arenas these days, we are caught up, you've noticed, I'm sure, in the language of winners and losers. Our politics are filled with it, and the disdain for those who are seen as losers is filled with such venom. But what if Wagner is right? And the idea of winners and losers is actually inverted. Our world has led us to believe people whose lives are successful are the ones who are blessed. And those whose lives are filled with problems and pain and sorrow are those who really screwed up somewhere along the way. That line of thinking makes so many of us feel better about where we are in this life. There's even a word for that condition. The original word comes from German, and I can't pronounce it, but the early English word 
if I can say this, is Epi Kara Akase. This is the experience of pleasure or self-satisfaction that comes from learning or witnessing the troubles, the failures, the suffering, the humiliation, or pain of other people. Well, our gospel reading this morning says that the world's way of deciding what is good in this life cannot possibly be right. This time, Jesus is sitting on a mountainside with a large crowd of people who were viewed as losers by the Roman occupiers. Jesus cared deeply for these people who knew pain and loss so intimately. And with all of his sharing and teaching, he was helping them to find a way to go through and beyond the harshness of their lives. Jesus, like very few leaders who are honest, was facing his own pain and loss right along with them. So he taught them what he was learning day by day. In our life, in our time, in our world, we continue to be so influenced by the never-ending race to get ahead that we fail to see our own loss and pain. And in doing so, we cannot see the loss and pain of others. And yet, our loss and pain and their loss and pain are filled with the power to change the world. The gospel tells us this is the truth. So how do we get to the place where we can actually see how practicing this inverted pathway can help us find a future filled with hope. Many of you have read Cahil Gibran. He was brought up a Marianite Christian, but he was an Arab, and so he was also influenced not only by his own religion, but also by Islam, and especially by the mysticism of the Sufis. He wrote long ago, many of us spend our whole lives running from feelings with the mistaken, mistaken belief that we cannot bear the pain. But he writes, we have already borne the pain. What we have not done is feel all that we are beyond that pain. On our life journeys, it can be tempting to race toward what is next and away from the pain. But a wise one counsels us to wait and to pay attention to how God is present even in the shadows long before the light arrives. Whatever the texture of the shadows we may journey through, the painful nights of loss, grief, and suffering, or the hopeful shadows of anticipation, mystery, and dreaming, God desires to meet us there to use even these liminal times as places of discernment, of creating, of imagining. Places where healing can begin and a sacred path forward can be forged, even when we cannot see where it will lead. This process does, though, require us to learn humility. It requires us to live in times of unknowing. St. John of the Cross said, we are never more in danger of stumbling than when we think we know where we are going. When we can no longer see the path we are on, when we can no longer read the maps we have brought with us or sense anything in the night that may tell us where we are. Then and only then can we begin to know the God who goes with us. Working as a hospital chaplain for many years meant I saw a lot of suffering and pain and loss. 
While I was writing yesterday, I realized perhaps for the first time that over all those years, I was practicing feeling pain. Certainly, I had experienced a lot of pain in my own life by then, but I also spent those years running from that pain. In those days, working in the hospital, death and dying were my constant companions. And thankfully, I realized before I drowned in the pain and sorrow of others that I wasn't really helping them in the way they deserved. It was Zen Buddhism and Dr. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross who saved me. I have never forgotten the words she wrote that not only gave me hope, but helped me finally realize that practicing pain and suffering could make me become who I truly wanted to be. After all her years of working with death and dying, she came to believe the most beautiful people we have known are those who have known defeat, known suffering, known struggle, known loss, and have found their way out of the depths. These persons have an appreciation, a sensitivity, and an understanding of life that fills them with compassion, gentleness, and a deep loving concern. Beautiful people, she said, do not just happen. A lot of the pain in my life, perhaps like yours, came from something I could have done differently. Other pain and suffering came from people and circumstances that were out of my control. And I have sadly managed against all I know that is good and true to create pain for others. There are so many things we cannot change. So many things that each of us got wrong. Yet if we decide to work on those things, if we can put them in their proper place, we have the potential of getting things right from now on. As I wrote this over the last few days, I felt like this sermon was rather simplistic. It wasn't the one, two, threes of some church sermons. But in some ways, I felt that it wasn't capturing the deep pain and loss that many of us may be feeling right now. Someone said to me this morning they were looking forward to this sermon because they believe we are always so positive and so joyous that it's hard to know what to do with our pain. It's hard to know what to do with the loss that we are experiencing. Thankfully, the sermon is only one part of this service. And everyone that has a part of planning these services weaves into the music and the words and the greeting of each other, all the pieces that say to us sincerely in this place, here it is all right to practice your pain. I'm not sure that any of us have had a lot of those places in our lives. My great hope and my prayer is that we will all know we can be those who are called blessed each and every day of this life that we are so privileged to share. 
because I believe with all my heart the God of the universe is with us. No matter what we do, no matter how we feel, no matter how lost we find ourselves right now. If you remember nothing else today, remember this promise that the God of the universe is always and forever with you. Amen.